Okay guys, interesting Ask Scruff today. Um, it's a little bit thought provoking and I genuinely have to put my thinking cap on. So let's fire up the Discord and I'll tell you. And a warm welcome. Let me get a coffee, because we all know Scruffy likes a coffee. Let me just fire over the Discord a second. Just a second. Right, there we go. Um, this is Trader Talk, where the guys have a, a little bit chat, one thing and another. They're on having a bit chat about the DAX this, this afternoon. Uh, there's a couple of them doing face-to-face -face in the bar. I'm live every day as well, face-to-face uh, -face with myself. And I'm an open book, you can kind of come along and talk to me sort of thing. Now down here in the trader clinic, we also have a scruff. <coughs> oh, let, let me get another drink, because I'm, I'm sure I've been doing um, the toilet today. Finishing off some work in the house, and I'm full of dust. So, Scruffy, if I had to start again, and I had sort of 3 to 5k personal capital, how would I go about it? Um, would I put prop, Darwin, Vanguard, how much would I trade personally? Would I get one prop, cycle through daily, etc, Black Bull? Okay, so essentially starting again. Now, if it was me and I've got my skill set, I would break up the money. You know, I definitely would. And I'll touch on that in a minute. But I also have to ask the question, is this to me personally or just somebody in general? Now, if it's somebody in general, they might necessarily have the skill set. So just because you've got... 3,000 pounds or 5,000 doesn't mean to say you can use it effectively because you might be tendency to gamble. So in that instance, what I would do initially is I would certainly put a thousand pound into Vanguard straight away and then put it on a global tracker. Uh, I use FTSE All Cap and the S&P 500. Um, and I also have a bonds section. You'll see it in the the update videos I do at the end of the month. And why? It's not going to build Rome in a day, but it's going to be compounded passive income over a horizon of five, 10 years. I set mine up with a 10 year horizon and it's doing quite well. I wish I'd done it as a young man. Um, I really do, but we had endowments and stuff when I was a kid and I, and I did take advantage of them and it done me well. Anyway, so that's the first thing I would do. I'll put I'd put a thousand pound away, which leaves me two thousand pounds worth of capital. And I'm just working on the downside of three grand. So if I've got three grand, would I immediately put that in a broker? No, of course I wouldn't, because I could lose it straight away. I'd need to understand my skill set. So I'd give myself six months to understand the markets, get a feel for them, and get a feel for a strategy. Now, I'm not a big believer in X marks the spot strategies. I'm a believer in reading the markets and then reacting to them as a day trade and managing your trades. That's where I think the money's made. So you need to learn that because when you back test and even a moving average cross system, on paper, it'll always look perfect. But in reality, it's bloody hard work because you're always looking for the perfect setup. So what I would do is I'd work out some form of system the way you want to play it. Now, for me, I would use Golden Eye, worked on, on the way I work a bias out, and that's the way I would move forward. Because historically it works quite well, you know, following the rules of Kylie, etc. Now, let's just say you've got your strategy and you've back tested it for so long and you're quite happy with it. Doesn't mean to say it's gonna work. So don't, for the love of God, put a lot of money on the line. So then you need to forward test this thing. Now forward testing it is what I prefer. So you back test to make certain your rules of engagement are reasonably sound. And then you forward test with very small money to make certain that it's profitable. Now the first way of doing that is 30 days. So it's one trade, one product, smallest size, across 30 days. 
If you are profitable at the end of the 30 days and you've taken no more than 30 trades, you pass. If you were profitable and you took 36 trades because you took a cheeky trade somewhere in the 30 days, you fail. That shows tendencies of gambling and you're, being, you're not disciplined enough. You need to learn that. All right? If you were negative, that system failed. All right? So I would do that. So there's 30 days wiped out. Now, what if it didn't work in the first 30 days? I have to do it again. All right? Then, once I've got through that 30 days, I want to see if I can put some discipline into this and trade it properly because I've now earned the right to. At this point, what I will be doing is, if I haven't already done this, because you could do your 30 days on a paper account, but I'm a big believer that you should have some skin in the game. It's why we do the small account challenge with the guys in the squad. We start it with 200 quid. And the idea is you're dealing with pennies, but you get that connection with it and you're building up a pot at the same time. Now, a good way of doing this, rather than just chuck your money straight into a broker and away you go, buy yourself a cheap prop fund. Now, I only recommend in the prop space, the 5%ers. Why? I've known them a long time and they do what they say they'll do, which I think is more than fair. Now, they, they do have three programs. They've got the hyper growth, um, the high stakes and the boot camp. Now, when you're just starting, the hyper growth, you still need to know what you're doing. It's the most expensive of the three uh, for an initial layout. Your high stakes is pretty cheap, but the better of the three to learn on is the boot camp. Now, hear me out with this one, because a lot of people do shoot me down with flames. They say, ah, oh, no, no, the high stakes is better. No, I think the boot camp is, because you've got to pass three stages to get through, but you trade the way you like. With high stakes, you have to hit a certain percentage over three days on one of the challenges, which I think is pushing the board out for a beginner a little bit too much, hence its name, high stakes. The boot camp is smoother, it's gentler. So you can take that and look to pass it over six months. So each phase takes two months. So you've earned the right, then you get funded and you haven't dented your capital in the meantime. But you're gonna to have to pay a little fee at the end of it. And it still won't be cheap. Once you've got through passing the stages, you can then use the profits of the boot camp to fund your own trade. Now, three months into doing the boot camp, you might think you're doing okay. So what you can do is actually open up a longer term trade setup as well and the company, and you did mention it, Darwin, Darwin X, they have a good opportunity. I, I use it myself on a swing. I don't post it up too much. It, it's just for myself. Um, are you gonna have ev a hit every month? No, of course you're not, swing trading. You're gonna have down months, you know, so you're not gonna hit every month. So as long as your profits outweigh your losses, you're fine. But what it means is you can concentrate honing your skill during the day on the boot camp, a little bit skin in the game, and then you can look at a swing trade on your Darwin because you've got plenty of time to do it. And it will also pay you as well because it will seed you. So you'll have seed money, get your score over 75, you get your seed money. That will pay you on your efforts. If you get into sort of third party endorsement where people will pay on your index, you'll get paid off that as well. If it's a live account and you're not using the zero, then you're getting paid off your own profits and you could invest in yourself. So there's four ways to get a profit from Darwin. Now, if you are using the zero, again, it's, it's about 40 euros a month. But they have brought out a thing today, is it today or was it yesterday, where you can buy it in bulk and get a discount. So again, you can use your capital to, to buy like a year's worth of zero. And you've got big funds and it's already paid for. So that's a way forward. And then finally, 
start feeding into your own account. Now that's one way to go. Isn't that logical? But if it was me, I would do it like this. I'm a big believer in breaking things up because I don't like to hold all my money in one place. And I do it with a bank account. I break it up, you know, or even credit cards. I have multiple credit cards because I, I never have everything in the same place. I have one for my car, one for my holidays, one for, well, Joanne has a bunch of them for her. And I try and clear them off every month. Why? Because I don't want any debt. Anyway, cut long story short. So I'm profitable. I would still open up a prop because it's quite cheap money. You know, you pay a little bit, get decent funds so you can put decent size on. And as soon as you've got your money back from what you've put into it, it doesn't matter if you pop it. You know, you've seen me pop them. You know, I'm not perfect. I have blown prop accounts because of the rules that are in based on them. But I've also got long-term prop accounts that I've kept on going. And I do very sm small, steady growth all the time and it pays me quite well. So that's quite passive. And that's mirrored from a day trading account. Now my day trading account pays me day in, day out. And again, I don't swing at the fences. I look for a monetary amount that I can easily achieve. Now you've got 2000 quid to play with. You could put a thousand pound into a live account. All right, you're paying on a pound a point, but if you're looking for 20 quid a day, well, that's a hundred pound a week. You know, it's 400 pound a month. That's 4,000 pound a year off one account. It's not bad if you're just kicking away. You've got a passive income with Vanguard, just moving along. So you can take your 4,000 from your personal account, enjoy it, let the prop start mirroring it. But the profits from the prop, you can put half of it into Vanguard and you put half of it in your live account. So you're filling your live account up. And then finally, I will put a little bit of money in the Darwin on a live account. Why? Because I can be paid multiple ways with Darwin and I would use it as a swing trade. And then I've got a backup account to my day trade. Now, if I was looking for higher leverage, I would be on Black Bull because it offers that high leverage. Because living in the UK, we're under ESMA rules and there's certain products you need the leverage to open. And Black Bull's perfect for that. And there's links for all of these below if you want to check that out. Because I only ever speak about things that I, I personally use. Now, as you go through your learning history, the transition should be more to your own account than anything else. Vanguard will look after itself, but your live account means if you decide that you're going to take three months off, that money will still be there. In prop, if you haven't withdrawn your profits and one thing or another, your account freezes after about 30 days um, and you can't withdraw from it. You're only ever getting your profits from it. You're not having any capital. Whereas if you've got capital reserves, that's the way I would do it. But I wouldn't throw everything into a broker straight away. Or maybe it's only drip feed in. So I'll put a thousand pound in to start with and use that as a baseline and then only top it up once it goes under the baseline. Because if you throw everything into it, you could lose it. it just helps you with your discipline. And if you need to top it up, it means you've physically got to go to a bank account where Put the rest of it in a, in a high interest account. You've got to physically go to that account to put it into your broker. Slow you down. So that's roughly the way I would do it if I started again. Um, I cherish your thoughts actually in, in the comments because it, it's a very odd subject as to how would you start. Um, I'd kind of mirror roughly what I'm doing now but on a smaller scale because of your capital intake. But yeah, I would definitely go with a boot camp, put some in Darwin, put some in a live account, and then put a, a chunk into Vanguard and then start shoveling into Vanguard for a longer term. Use the day trade and the prop for short term and you'll have Darwin X somewhere in the middle. I hope that kind of helps. And as always guys, trade well, keep your risk managed, but above all, 
Do what you love. And the money will follow. See you all in the next one.